Welcome to my 3D corner. In the last episode we discussed about how to make money uh, as a 3D uh, visualizer. In today's episode we are going to create our first 3D model using the late modifier. Uh, we're going to model it, we're going to apply textures, create materials for it and rendering and in the end we're gonna upload the 3D model on the website that we just talked about in the last episode. We have many things to discuss today so please follow me. We're gonna use a method that is called late method. What is late? Uh, late is, let's see, late. So a late is a machine tool that rotates a piece about an axis of rotation to perform various operations such as, such as cutting, sanding, snorkeling, uh, knurling, uh, drilling, deformation, facing, turning and so on. Uh, this is how the machine looks like. Yeah, if you think about any round object uh, like this, you can create them with a lathe. So yeah, if you want to have a look for more, uh, also pottery, it's working on the same, uh, with the same idea. Yeah, please check out here on the Wikipedia and this is the a late machine uh, where you can introduce a, a metal bar inside and you can rotate it and then you can create all these shapes on it. So we're gonna create our first uh, 3D model today using the late method. Uh, we're gonna create a table. It's going to be a round table of course. So how we're going to do that? So we're going to use a website that is called Architonic com and here we're gonna find out what are people looking for these days so we're gonna go to furniture and we're gonna try to find a coffee table so I'm gonna go tables coffee table and here the website is gonna show us a lot of coffee tables but if you scroll down and you go here on the left side the website is gonna tell you what are the most visited products so these here are the most visited product. So what does it mean? It means that if you choose an object from here, the probability for someone else to try to find it and download your 3D model that you're going to upload on one of the websites that I told you in the last episode, it's quite high. So for example, we can, we're gonna go with this one, for example. Polar by Van Delbo. This is the table, it looks very nice. So these are the materials that it's made of. So probably this is the aluminium and this is the marble part. And what we're going to do, we're gonna go on our 3D models website and try to see if someone else has the 3D model already there. So we're gonna go to CG Mood first. I'm gonna paste here the object. No results, sorry. So nobody has the 3D model here yet. We go to 3D Sky paste here the object. Oh, we have some 3D models in here. So yeah, anyway, uh, let's see on the other website, on CG Trader, if they have it here. Uh, they don't. So the only place that we have the table already, the two tables, because there are actually two, uh, it's on 3D Sky. That's not, that's not a very big problem because uh, most of the time people are downloading the latest. So, okay. First, what we need to do is to find as much information as possible about this object, this polar table. So as you can see here, we have the description, product description with, with the height and uh, the dimensions of the table. So that's really good. We have the description for the materials. So what we're going to need is uh, powder coated aluminum and marble and black linoleum thing. This is in between, maybe, uh, I have no idea, or maybe this top part is in... But in my opinion, this is all a black aluminum and this is the marble part. It needs to, have to be heavy on the bottom so it's not gonna fell when you add heavy objects on it. So let's try to find the table on the manufacturer website. I'm gonna go here. Of course, Google is gonna show me how also how much it's costing. It's quite expensive, if you ask me. 
and we found it here. So it's made by Vendelbo dot dk which is denmark let's go on their website now we have better pictures here this is good because we can see all the details as you can see it has round corners here it's looking very nice we have the dimensions the materials black powder coated aluminium and the bottom is the marble part uh, they have also drawings which is amazing so let's take them down polar download this i'm gonna create a folder polar table inside i'm going to create folder with uh, all the information that we got so resources i'm gonna save in here all the stuff that i can get from the website so we got we can get also some pictures so we can see the table in the environment it's very important always to know exactly how so how the object is looking in the environment you can see here you can see the details this is quite sharp so that's good to know because uh, most of the companies they are using 3d renderings for showing their products uh, we found also dimensions which is very good i think we have everything that we need to create this what else do we need we need to create the materials so we need a black marble which is looking like this and let's see uh, there is a website that i'm always using for uh, marbles and onyx materials it's called solid nature they have really good textures and uh, we can use them and i'm going to show you how to make them tileable let's go to marble and i think it's this one bella noir and this one looks quite close it's only white and black and has a little bit of white so this is probably the one i'm gonna save this one here i'm gonna create a folder called textures save this in here so for this 3d model we're going to use Studio max 2018 uh, why is that is because on 3d sky which is the only website that has the 3d model already you need to have they are letting you upload a 3d model on their website only if you have your 3D model made with 3D Studio Max 2016 because 3D Studio Max 2021 can save only three versions back so this means that uh, the oldest version that you can save from 3D Studio Max 2022 is 2019 so you can't upload 2019 3D models on their website yet so this is why I'm, I have three versions of 3D Studio Max installed all the time and I'm going to use the 3D Studio Max 2018 I'm gonna open it right now okay we have the with Alt W I told you already you can maximize the window the first thing that I want to do is to check the unit setup so I want to work in metrics in meters and the system unit I'm gonna be in millimeters okay I'm gonna import the from resources the DXF file from their website I'm not gonna change anything here the smooth angle I'm gonna leave it as it is I'm gonna leave everything as it is okay let's see how their drawings are looking yeah these are their drawings for the object looks really cool the only thing that it's missing we don't these are only side views and the top part but if you remember this has a small detail here which we can't see in these images so if i go back to the images i'm using a software which is called pure reference and what you can do with this with this software is that you can add some the pictures that we already downloaded from their website and i can add them here and i can have them all the time this is one this is another one i can make this see what i was talking about earlier it was about this detail so what's happening here we don't have that detail but we can figure out the depth of that but until then uh, let's start to create our 3d model so how we're gonna use it so i'm gonna take the line and create a shape i'm gonna use the snapping tool in 2.5 i'm gonna go here and check take the grid points out because these are the grid points yeah and use the vertex points and now i'm gonna click on this i'm gonna go here and then i'm gonna click on this i'm gonna go here 
and then I'm gonna click on this and then with the shift I'm gonna go like this now I created the shape now I need to adjust my shape according to the reality which is the which are the lines behind so what I need to do I'm gonna take the snap toggle out and put this exactly on the same line I'm gonna make this bigger plus and minus with this with the snap to go on I'm gonna add here something that is called axis constraints I'm gonna click in enable axis constraints in snap to go so what does it mean it means that I can take this on only one axis and move it and if I click here on this point it's gonna align two points in the same plane so that one is correct now I need to move this in the upper part a little bit to have it in the same direction so now it's that it's cool I'm gonna take these two points and move them lower here and try to connect this as close as possible so the two lines are gonna align is it align almost it looks quite good also this one needs to be aligned so I need to take this on the topper part move it more to the left a little bit so this until here it went perfectly this needs to go exactly in the middle of this line so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put a snap to go right click on it and say here middle point in this way the, it's gonna go exactly on the middle point so that's good uh, what do I need here I need to create another line I'm gonna go to create line click on this point and go to the middle okay now these two lines there are two lines in here if I go here to the spline it's gonna show me this is one and this is another spline so we have two I want to have only one in here so what I'm going to do I'm gonna click the vertex point click both of them add here one meter and I'm gonna weld them so as you can see these two things appear this means that they are welded I'm gonna right click on it actually I'm gonna control a on the vertex yeah and I'm gonna change everything to corner to be sure that everything is on the corner yeah okay I'll go to on top view again back and I have almost finished the thing I need to create these chamfers here but this is not a problem the thing that I'm missing right now is that detail that I told you is this gap here so what I'm guessing is that here is going somewhere until here I don't know exactly the distance here but I can guess so probably is around one centimeter so I can create here Because right now it's showing me everything in meters yeah so one centimeter is 0 0.01 so 0 0.01 so this is one centimeter I'm gonna click on this so with this selected I'm gonna click on the vertex and go on the upper part and select the object as you can see these two lines are not really aligned so what I'm going to do I'm gonna take this point and try to align it to align it here and this one to align it here and then both of these two try to align them on the top part here so now they should be aligned oh yeah it's looking good so and now I'm gonna take this move it here so I can have the reference of one centimeters it 
looks quite big one centimeter to me so probably oh sorry here so probably this is not really one centimeter it could be also like half of centimeter but yeah let's see so i'm gonna create that detail i'm gonna select my line yeah my main line that i've created until now and with the vertex on i'm gonna go here and use refine and add another point here so it's like splitting the line yeah i'm gonna add another one because i want to move all this line with the snap to go on here to create this one centimeter edge yeah now i'm gonna take all of this and move it lower here i hope these two points are in the same plane i'm gonna just do it right now so i think this is how the table looks like so we did all of that what i'm going to do now in the modifier list i'm gonna apply the lathe so he did a lathe but didn't how it's supposed to do uh, how it needs to do it so i'm gonna click on minimum and as you can see we have a 3d model well a part of it it has here some edges, uh, some uh, straight lines. Uh, this is happening because, because so right now, when he start, when he starts revolving the line that I made earlier, the spline there, he did it by 16 segments. So if you, if I'm showing you the numbers of the second segments here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are 16 in total. This is why it's looking like this. So this can be very easy fixable. We add here 32 and now it's already better or I can add 64 and it's gonna be perfect. As you can see. Uh, what else I'm going to do because here it's creating some strange polygons. I'm gonna weld the core and it's now it's almost perfect. It's looking quite amazing so now we created the row object I'm gonna go back to the top but as you can see our original uh, file has some nice details here some round corners here and there so we need to create all of that so what I'm going to do I'm gonna hit my object hide for now the lat modifier and uh, apply and go on the top view part and apply so another editable spline and try to create those details so for example here this one i'm gonna select this vertex and i'm gonna go here with the fillet and i'm gonna try to create the fillet so it is 0.14 yeah this is how they did it so as you can see i made the first detail now i'll go and create another one I can also click directly here on the button and just go with the mouse button directly here and to approximate it by uh, with the mouse pointer. I can click on this one and do this. So now we've created some nice details. I can go and apply the and we can have the object look at this beauty it's looking very very well I think it is perfect yeah if you want to have more I think it's looking quite good actually the only thing that I don't like is this edge here and these two edge edges here because these are very sharp in reality you don't have really sharp edges so what i'm going to do i'm going to apply an add another editable spline over i'm going to unselect anything and apply another editable spline and select go to the top view and as you can see here this is the fillet that I need to create so probably the same fillet needs to go on the other side so I'm gonna select both of them go to the fillet and try to create 
that. So I have the two fillets here. So right now this is the object as you can see this looks good. If I go very close to it I can still see the segments but I can put more of them here 78 and it's gonna look better. What else we can actually do is to apply a case I think the object looks really really good I we just need to apply the material on it and it's kind of done okay let's create the base now I'm gonna go to top so how am I gonna create I'm gonna choose the rectangle click anywhere here go to the middle apply an editable spline on it most of the time, all the objects are starting in the or they should start with splines. I'm gonna select the vertexes and move them here. Then I'm gonna take this one and move it here. The other one, I'm gonna move it bottom part. I'm gonna select all of them and create corners sure I'm gonna unselect this now I need to check if they are actually these two splines they are one above the other so this should be more or less here because in the moment that I'm gonna apply the lathe on all of this, I'm, it's going to create another segment, another polygon in the middle. So we don't want to have that. We don't want to have anything in the inside. And what I can do now, so I don't need to apply another lathe, I'm gonna copy this lathe because this has already all the properties that I need. It has the number of segments. It has, uh, it goes 360. Should also generate maybe mapping coordinate in real world map size. I'm gonna explain in the future uh, episode why we're using the real world map size. And I'm gonna take this, I'm going to copy this uh, late uh, properties and apply them here as a paste. It's going to look like this, so it's making bigger because it's taking the coordinates of the top part. This is much wider, the object. But I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna use the minimum. If you have problems with this, because this can also happen, you can go here, click on this arrow, you click the axis, and now, as you can see, the axis is this, the yellow line, so I can move this axis anywhere. So this is, you can change, this is how you can change the width of the object. Okay, this is almost done. I'm going to the top. I'm gonna apply another editable spline above this to create the round corners exactly the same way how we did it last time. I'm gonna click on it, fill it, create it. I'm gonna go here, do exactly the same thing. And we have the object. This is how the object is actually looking. 